Hey guys, I thought I'd just show you a couple of quick things that you could try in order to practice some of the skills that we've learned in our ground school so far. So I wanted to start out with, you know, what could you do if you have a sim? If you wanted to say, let's say, practice uh, your scan and basic attitude instrument flying. So I've gone ahead and loaded up the Bloomsburg Municipal Airport here in my simulator. I'm flying a 172 with traditional instrumentation. Now I've started on the ground, but if you want to, you could start in the air. The other thing is that if you don't have a set of rudder pedals, you probably want to start in the air because these sims are a little bit tricky uh, when it comes to steering with the rudder pedals, even if you have a nice set. This is something you'll notice even if you fly the Redbird Simulator, for example. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take off here and get started. I have to give it a little bit of right rudder. Now, once I get into the air, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch my view so that I can pretty much only see the instruments. In other words, so I can't see outside. I kind of need to see outside in order to take off in the sim. Once I'm up in the air here, I go ahead and take off. I go ahead and switch my view now. Okay, so I'm climbing at a nice constant rate. I'm going to drift back over to my heading. Remember all those standard rules that you learned as a student pilot still apply. Things like leading our rollout from a turn, things like leading your level off from a climb or a descent. So I'm just going to fly out to the west here. I'm going to go ahead and climb up to 2,000 feet. Interesting thing is that notice when I'm level, my wingtips are not actually touching those white lines on my turn coordinator, which is a little bit annoying. But Okay, so as I'm climbing out here, uh, some things to think about. We talked a lot about scans and different kinds of scans. Uh, one of the more common scans that people will do is the spoke scan, where you look at the attitude indicator and then you look to the airspeed. You look back at the attitude indicator, look at the altimeter. Look back to the attitude indicator, look at your turn coordinator, look back to the AI, and then look at your AI, look at your VSI. So that's a very common scan. And of course, your book talks about other kinds of scans and what's most appropriate during certain phases of flight. Uh, you also might recall that supporting and primary instruments about that there was that huge scary table and had all that information on what was primary and supporting for pitch bank and power so right now i am doing a straight climb on a heading of west primary pitch instrument a pitch instrument I'll, I'll leave that one up to you. I mean, obviously, I can see my pitch from my attitude indicator. I can also tell my pitch because I look at my altimeter and I see that it's going up. I see my VSI also indicates a climb. So all of those things tell me what my pitch is doing. What about bank? Well, again, I can look at my attitude indicator. Now, since I'm in an established heading and I'm not trying to make a turn, you know, things like my DG are going to be important. Then, of course, my turn coordinator will tell me if I'm climbing or descending. Sorry, I mean, banking left or right, turning left or right. Okay, so I'm 100 degrees or 100 feet from my level off point. So using my rule of thumb, I'm climbing at a thousand foot per minute. I'm going to start pushing forward on the yoke, bringing that nose down. And 
throttling back. So important things, uh, you know, what are you doing here? You're trying to work on your scan. You're not necessarily trying to learn how to fly any particular aircraft. You know, you can say, how realistic is my simulator? Well, it really depends on which simulator you have. Uh, some of them are obviously better than others. So I'm going to try to stabilize here on my heading of west. I'm going to nudge myself up that extra 40 feet, get myself up to 2,000. And remember, don't accept deviations. Don't say, well, I'm only a little bit off. Well, that's too much. All right, and I'll go ahead and make a nice standard rate turn toward the south. Give myself a little bit of nose down trim which in the simulator is electric, but in reality isn't really even an option on the Cessnas and plus their trim systems are so sloppy anyway, it wouldn't matter if you had that option in a 172. All right, so I'm going to roll in my bank here. Remember our rule of thumb, either 15% of your speed or 10% of your speed plus five. Uh, since we're going right about 100 knots, they both work out to be about the same. So we should be looking at around 15 degrees of bank, which is approximately what I have here. My standard rate turn. And the same things apply when I go to roll out from this turn. All right, so remember, I'm going to lead my rollout by half my bank angle. So I'm banking, we'll call it 20-ish degrees. So when I get to about 10 degrees before south, so a heading of 190, I'm going to start backing off on my bank and hopefully I should roll out exactly on south. All right, so there's my 10 degrees beforehand. I'm just going to start gently rolling it back. There I am on my south heading. So these are the kinds of things I'd recommend. Just, you know, go back to the basics, things that you learned as a student pilot, the basic attitude flying, but now we call it basic attitude instrument flying, where can I hold a heading? Can I do a constant heading climb or descent? Can I do turns that and remain level? You know, once you get that down pretty well and you've got your scan going pretty well, from there, move on and try to do climbing and descending turns and some other things like that. So that, that should keep you busy and also help you work on your scan a little bit.